again, welcome to Siege, Aaron. Um, one of the things we just like to have attendees, especially uh, featured speakers, talk about um, what's uh, one of the projects you're working on right now and what made you decide to work on a project like that? So right now, uh, I'm bringing my work together uh, from Sense of Wonder into Glass Lab. Uh, my company is actually doing some work on the platform itself. So we're actually building infrastructure so that game developers who have games that might go into classrooms, uh, even um, games like Civilization or SimCity that teachers would really like to have in their classroom that might be fun first but have educational purposes, we're creating a, a web platform that will allow them to do that. So to do classroom management and get distribution, we have distribution into thousands of classrooms. Uh, and I, I'm really passionate about that because I've been developing educational games for the past three years. And one of the things that we discovered in making uh, what we consider to be a new form of educational game is that there just aren't enough games out there to address all of the subjects uh, in a school curriculum that we want to address. So we really need to make our platform accessible to lots of developers, and that's what we're working on now. Well, when you mention this platform, is this something uh, proprietary that a school would have to buy into? Or is it something that, you know, anyone can, you see classrooms with iPads and stuff like now, mm -hmm. is there anything they could access through that or uh, their PC lab or something mm -hmm. along those lines? Yeah, it's, um, we're still working on the business model, which is actually the, the challenging part. There are lots of ways to get the games into classrooms. It is a platform uh, that they can get, uh, teachers can get a free 60 day trial into to kind of try out and see if they like it. And if they like it, there are many ways of getting funding. Uh, what we see in the space is it's common for them to seek a grant to get an account on a system like this. So there are lots of ways to bring it into the classroom. Okay. Um, what would you like to highlight maybe either as a speaker this year at Siege or just your general look at how the industry is right now, what would you like to highlight? Um, I think it's a really interesting time to be an independent game developer. I, I think that there are a lot of ways to reach audiences, but right now we've had this long problem of discovery. Uh, I, what I would really like to talk to developers about and fans about is that there are ways that games that have fun as their primary purpose to really uh, reach people that we haven't reached before, and especially to reach people in low-income schools who might not have access to games, and uh, that they can, those games have a real power to uh, light up a kid who might not have access to very much. And so games themselves have this tremendous potential to, to make a really big impact in a way that I think most developers and fans don't think about very much. Very good. Um... What, what got you into the industry? What was your first job mm -hmm. in terms of trying to enter the industry as a whole? Yeah, it's funny. Um, I got in accidentally. So I was, um, I had a little online writing group when I was 15 years old on America Online. And uh, I was doing some sort of social community management and realizing that people on their own won't necessarily play fair. And so in this online writing group, I was t having to develop rule sets for people so we had structures for character creation and things like that. And I sort of accidentally got into um, RPG design that way. And then a friend of mine in the group said, you should play this text-based game. Uh, it was called, uh, I think she wanted me to play Gemstone, which was a, a small uh, mud, actually wasn't very small at the time, uh, by Simutronics, which is actually a company that's out here. And uh, I started playing Dragon Realms a lot and eventually signed up to be a, a developer, and I was a, a remote developer um, throughout college. Well, that's, a, that's actually a great way to enter the industry, just even, even by happenstance. Mm -hmm. um, someone who might be in your position now, uh, or let me rephrase that, someone who might be in your position now that you were when you entered the industry, mm -hmm. what advice might you want to offer them or just to speak on, maybe give them a little encouragement or a way to find a path forward for them to end up the way they wanted to pursue. Sure. Um, I mean, the most important thing is to just actually do the things that you love. So if, you, if you're if you attracted to a particular part of game development, to just make a game in that space, whether that you, you might begin uh, on paper, you know, making a, a board game about it that's in a particular vein. Uh, it's important to finish things to kind of start something small and finish it and realize that the stuff that all of us made in the beginning was really bad. And so you're gonna make a lot of things that you really care about and it's not gonna be good enough. And then over time, just doing it over and over again, you get better and better. You start to meet people. Um, it's important to reach out to people to come to places like this where you can connect with people who care about the things that you care about. With uh, your keynote this evening, um, mm -hmm. this is Saturday, uh, wanna kind of give us a little preview about maybe what you're gonna be speaking on? 
Sure. It's, it's a pretty wide-ranging talk, uh, and it's, it's, it's long, so I'm going to mostly be talking about my story, how I got in and what happened, and um, I kind of was in, uh, got into some events in the industry uh, at the time that I happened to be uh, really starting out that changed me and I think changed the industry, so I'll be talking about that a little bit. And then talking about this concept of mission-driven games and what it means if you if you have a passion to affect change in the world, even if that's a very small change, a little thing that you want people to think about differently, how you can bring that into game development and how I think it's uh, there's no better time than, than now. There has been no time in history in which it's better to be a, a game developer who wants to make a change in the world. Okay. Is there any um, specific panel or speaker you might be interested in hearing mm -hmm. at Siege on the, as an attendee or as just a fan of someone who wants to continuously learn in the industry? Who are you interested in hearing this weekend? Um, you know, I'm really here for the culture. I'm here because I've never been to Siege before and because I don't come out to this part of the country very often. So I'm really fascinated with game cultures and game development cultures. And I know that Atlanta has had this amazing game development culture for a long time. So I'm kind of here to just talk to everybody and, and see what it's like, see how it's different. Because I really believe that the, the world that you live in and your immediate area has a big influence on your creative identity. So I'm curious what the Atlanta identity is. Well, that's great. Um, very last question. Um, where do you see, you know, you, you mentioned Atlanta has an industry and where San Francisco, California obviously has a big part of the industry. Where do you see the industry as a whole um, moving five, ten years from now? Oh, man. It's hard to see that far in the future. Out. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time in game time. Um, I think it's hard to say for me, I, people are feel very strongly about this, whether uh, virtual reality will really have taken hold by then. I think that's the big question that we're all waiting to see answered. I know what I would like to see is even more diversification than we have been seeing. So I want to see new voices, more voices, more distributed voices, new forms of teams. Uh, and I'll, today I'll be in part talking about distributed teams and what happens if you're making a game when you're not all in the same place. I think that's part of the future. And I think what I hope is that it means more people making games uh, in a, a wider variety, both of game types and uh, from different experiences, that can broaden the effect and impact of games as a whole. Excellent. Well, again, welcome to Siege, and it's your first time here, you had mentioned. I uh, hope you have a great weekend, and we appreciate you taking time out of your day today to just kind of speak with the GGDA and let the, you're, I'm sure you have more than a few fans here, <laughs> kind of let them know why you're here, and they're excited to see you. Great. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here.